Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and today we are discussing Elder Uchtdorf's talk, The Prodigal and the Road that Leads Home. Um, I love Elder Uchtdorf, <laughs> and once again, he gave an amazing talk. Uh, it's very hopeful and very beautiful he's such a storyteller and that definitely shows in this talk so before i get into it i encourage you to read or watch or listen to this talk uh, before you come and listen to me talk about it so you can get your own inspirations and direction promptings that kind of thing um and then come listen to me talk about it if you really want to um so the majority of this talk it's probably going to be a pretty short essay, uh, episode because the majority of this talk is he's retelling the story of the prodigal son. So to recap the story of the prodigal son, of course, there's a certain man with two sons. One of the sons comes to his dad and says, you know, I want to leave. I want all of my inheritance now and I'm just I'm going to dip. So his father gives him his inheritance and he leaves. And at first it's great, you know, he spending his money freely and, you know, going on to all these adventures and uh, making new friends and living the life he's always dreamed of, right? And then, of course, he runs out of money. And then a famine happens. And so... He's panicking, and his supposed friends don't really help him with anything, and um, he's feeding pigs just to have uh, some sort of income so he can eat food, and he's thinking, he starts thinking about his father and going back to his father, but he's scared, he's scared to go back to his family and his village and be uh, judged and said, you know, I told you so, and to admit to all the terrible things he had done. Um, but then it got to be too much, and of course he decided that he needed to go back home. And at this point in the story, I love this elder Dorf. He says, let's go back to the father and think about him and his his experience during this time, right? He's worrying about his son. He's thinking about him constantly and and just heartbroken. He can't see, he hasn't seen him for so long and you know, constantly worrying about if he's okay and where he is and um, that he's safe and hoping that he would return. And one day he does, he looks at the road the road that leads home and he sees him coming back to him and as he gets him gets there he throws arms around him and the son says i have sinned and i'm no longer worthy of you and all i ask is you bring me back as a hired servant his father's like no bring the finest robe and rings on his fingers and sandals on his feet and make a feast to celebrate he's returned and I love this extra kind of perspective, right? Of the from the father's point of view, we get that a little bit, of course. He talks, you know, to his older son. He's like, he's died, he's come back, he was lost, and now he's found me. We see that jubilation, but to be reminded of like the grief of a parent. Um, I'm not a parent myself, but to like imagine that, to put that, put yourself in that person's shoes, right? Your son comes to you and says, I want to leave. And it's not not like now, right, where we could call them (laughs) or FaceTime or or keep up with their adventures on social media, right? He left. He left and didn't know when he was going to come back or if he ever come back. And he was worried and praying for him constantly. And, you know, to see him come back and to be so excited. He's like, no, you're not going to be a hired servant. You're, You're my son. And you have a place here. Um, and then, of course, he talks about the other brother, 
who he says is carrying some emotional baggage. And I also really loved the way he talks about this. He's talking about, you know, how the brother, <clears throat> the other brother, the older son, he was there. He got, he was there to see uh, his father or his brother demand his inheritance, the weight of grief on his father, the burden, he's trying to restore his father's broken heart, trying to live up to be worthy of two sons, even though he's just one person. And all of a sudden his brother is back and people can't stop talking about him. They can't stop telling him amazing he is. And he feels a little hurt. And he says, I've done everything you've asked me to all these years and you've now never celebrated me. And the father says, you know, all I have is yours. This is not about comparing. Like this is about healing. Your son is back, your, your brother's back. My son is back and we're going to celebrate that. And I, like, I think about this a lot. I have such compassion for the older brother, right? And I think when we are reading these stories, it's interesting to think about, you know, are we the prodigal son or are we the older brother? And definitely at different times in our lives, we're both, right? And sometimes we're the father. Um, but, you know, when are we, when we're the older brother, and I, I definitely, as the oldest in my family, I definitely see where he's coming from, right? It's hard with siblings. It's hard when you feel like everything's landing on you and that you're not being, um, given the credit you feel like you don't get, you're not getting the credit you deserve you're not being celebrated in the way that other people are being celebrated or you're being treated differently right i think about this i think about this a couple weeks ago i heard on a podcast about layman and lemuel kind of the same thing um that we always put down layman and lemuel right obviously they did terrible things i'm not saying that they didn't <laughs> they tried to kill nephi on multiple occasions and it's not okay very not okay obviously um and so they definitely you know made bad choices but i think sometimes we forget like one that people are different and so like the way that they react to his father is going to be different than the way that nephi reacted to their father and also i think about this and so i heard on this this uh, podcast that i've never really thought of before like sibling dynamics, right? They're the older brothers. They've been around forever. They've seen Nephi grow up. They were probably had a hand in raising him. And their father has always been a visionary man and they've kind of gotten tired of his antics. And all of a sudden he says, we're leaving. We're moving out of the city. And his, their, their younger brother's just going along with it. Saying like, oh yeah, I saw a vision too. And like all this stuff, right? And all of a sudden, they're not the favored anymore, right? Or maybe they felt like they were never the favored. Maybe they were not the favorite, right? And that hurts to think that you're being treated differently from your siblings. And thinking maybe my father loves them more. Maybe my parents love him more. And, you know, just because I'm not Nephi or just because... I saw a thing like, why can't you be more like such and such, right? Why can't you be more like Nephi? And that's really hard. It, it makes it hard on not only the sibling that's being, who's, you know, they're trying to say be better, but also the person they're being compared to it puts a lot of pressure on that, on that kid to be perfect, to, to always be someone that they're supposed to be living up to, right? Anyway, so I was thinking about that with these, with these brothers. Um, I can totally see where his, with where the son's coming from. Like I've been here the whole time. You've never thrown me a feast, you know, and it can feel really, really overwhelming. And so my question, off of these topics, off of these whatever, this is my question for this is how do you relate to the prodigal son in this story and how do you relate to the older brother? 
I want you to really think about that. Or maybe there were times in your life where you related to the older brother. Maybe there were times in your life when you related to the older son, right? Or the prodigal son. So it's interesting to think about. Um, we are the prodigal son. We are the people who are coming back to our Heavenly Father. and He's welcoming them back with open arms. But sometimes we are also the older brother and we are jealous or confused and not thinking there's enough to go around for people who are coming back, right? You know, why are they being uh, forgiven or whatever, right? Um, he talks about present Uchtdorf, Elliot Uchtdorf, sorry. He talks about this being a parable for our time and often we are, we feel desperate and humbled and brokenhearted and wanting forgiveness and maybe even thinking, is it even possible to go back? Will I ever be forgiven? And he has this really amazing quote. He says, our heavenly father will run to us, his heart overflowing with love and compassion He will embrace us, place a robe around our shoulders, a ring on our finger, and sandals on our feet, and proclaim, Today we celebrate, for my child who once was dead has come back to life. I think that's... That's the the beautifulness, the beauty of this story. Obviously, right? It's the whole point of the prodigal son, is he comes back kind of thinking that he's going to be disgraced, thinking that there's nothing he can do, that he'll never be able to get back into the good sides of God, into the, the good sides of his, his father. He's going to work as a servant for him, and he's welcomed back with fanfare and love and an overabundance of joy. And anyway, <laughs> um, he, President Uchtdorf, or Elder Uchtdorf says this as well. Um, he says, Your return will not diminish the blessings of others, for the Father's bounty is infinite, and what is given to one does not in the slightest dim- d- diminish the birthright of others. Remember, it's going off of that, right? Like, one, you'll be welcomed back with fanfare. And also, there's so much to go around. For those of us who are here, we need to remember that even though other people, like there, are, there's never not enough for everybody. There's a, a phrase on my on the podcast I listen to they talk about the scarcity mindset that often we think of like the scarcity of God's love or like there's not enough love or grace or forgiveness to go around and so you know we we start to judge whether other people should get it because then we don't get it and that just never made sense to me right of like ugh, but there's so much God loves everyone God has an infinite amount of love and forgiveness and love and grace right there's there's definitely enough to go around there's a line in hamilton (laughs) um well a whole song called the world was wide enough right there's aaron burr sings it and throughout kind of the whole show they're rivals and they're trying to one-up each other and be better and all this stuff and it's heartbreaking because he wins this duel against Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton dies. And he's singing this really heartbreaking song as he's like, I realized after, after the fact, the world was wide enough for both of us. You know, we didn't need to compete. There was enough to go around. I didn't need to, like, kill him <laughs> to gain back my reputation, right? Like, he, there is enough for everybody. The world is wide enough for both of us. Anyway, so, so that's my question for you. Um, as you're reading this and as you're thinking about the prodigal son and all the amazing things that 
Elder Uchtdorf talks about, like, how do you relate to the prodigal son, of course, and how do you, but also how do you relate to the older brother? So, um, and then Elder Uchtdorf kind of ends with his testimony and his, um, plea that we will hear the father calling us back and that we will return on, on the on the road that leads home so that is kind of all i've got for you today um thank you so much for listening or watching um as always you can find me on instagram or facebook um general conference conversations and then on youtube and wherever you find your podcasts and as always i love to hear from you so messages and emails and comments and reviews and all that jazz so i will talk to you next time